right now in this episode of A Photographer's Journey, virtual field trip around Yellowstone's Old Faithful Loop. See photos and videos from around the Old Faithful Loop. I'll share the best regional airports in the Yellowstone area, as well as the best places to stay inside the park. Learn about the best driving routes and estimated driving times for each. I'll share some advice and common sense about truly wild places like Yellowstone National Park. Welcome field trippers. On today's virtual field trip, I'll be showing you the Old Faithful Loop Trail in Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is my personal favorite of all of the beautiful national parks here in America. And speaking of beautiful, wasn't that introduction one of the most spectacular things you've seen about our national parks? On that intro, we were flying over the Yellowstone River in the canyon area of Yellowstone National Park. We were approaching the lower falls of the Yellowstone River, and then we flew up and over the lower falls and turned slightly to the west towards Midway Geyser Basin, where we flew over something really beautiful, the Grand Prismatic Spring. From there, we turned south over the Firehole River down towards the Old Faithful Complex, where we saw visitors exiting the new visitor center and walking out towards the Old Faithful Geyser viewing area. And lastly, we saw a slow motion, spectacular eruption of Old Faithful Geyser. Very beautiful. So let's get started on today's virtual field trip. The loop is about two miles long and depending on how many stops you want to make for photos, you can do it in a little over an hour, hour and a half, or you can do what I do. I spend maybe a half a day going around the old faithful loop trying to get various angles on the pictures that I want to show my friends back home. You'll see geysers, um, you'll see hot springs. Um, it's just a gorgeous place to visit. I'll start out this virtual field trip by talking about travel from outside the US or cross country travel within the United States to get you to one of the regional airports closest to Yellowstone National Park. The two regional airports that I find easiest for my personal travel are Bozeman, Montana. The airport identifier is BZN, that's Bravo, Zulu, November, and Jackson, Wyoming. The airport identifier there is JAC, that's Juliet Alpha Charlie. From the airport, you'll want to make reservations for accommodations closer in to Yellowstone. The gateway cities to Yellowstone are West Yellowstone, Montana, Gardner, Montana, Jackson, Wyoming, and Cody, Wyoming. These gateway cities have accommodations that you'll find very comfortable for your stay in the Yellowstone area, but I will give you a bit of a warning. The driving times from a gateway city to some areas within the park can be quite long. So I recommend that you think about staying at one of the National Park Lodges inside of the National Park. These lodges are operated by a company called Zantera Parks. That's X-A-N-T-E-R-R-A. -R -R -A. The URL to the Zantera website is on the screen. You can also check with the National Park Service website for Yellowstone National Park and get accommodation information there as well. 
and the URL to that site is also on the screen. Here is a brief overview of the Yellowstone National Park highway system. Each day as you come into the park, you'll receive a map that looks something like this one. On the screen is the interior of that map. The roadway system around Yellowstone consists primarily of two loop roads. There's a north loop road and there's a south loop road. Your driving times from one part of this highway system to another part can be affected by a number of things. The first is the speed limit is 45 miles per hour and it is radar enforced by law enforcement rangers. The second thing is wildlife traffic jams. Yellowstone's a wild place. It's not a zoo. It's not an amusement park. It's a very wild place and the animals are free to roam. Use caution when you see animals near the roadway or approaching the roadway and use extreme caution and don't get out of your car if you see others stopping to do unsafe things. Anytime you'll be driving in and around the Yellowstone area, I recommend that you log on to the National Park Service website each morning before you depart your hotel or wherever your lodging is to check road conditions inside of Yellowstone. I've learned the hard way to do this. Uh, road conditions can change literally overnight or within the day for that matter. So it's a good idea to at least check the road conditions before you start out each day. Now that you're familiar with the overall highway loop system around Yellowstone National Park, let's get you on down to the Old Faithful area from which we will be able to get parked and meet in front of the visitor center to start the walk around the Old Faithful Loop. From Gardner, Montana, you'll travel down this route towards the Old Faithful area, which I'll mark with an oval on the map. From West Yellowstone, Montana, you'll travel this route to get down to the Old Faithful area. Once you get down to the Old Faithful area, you'll see signs directing you toward the Old Faithful geyser. You want to follow those signs. From here, I'm going to use a different map. This is from the Old Faithful Trail Guide. You can get these guides anywhere around the Old Faithful area, especially if you're about to enter one of the points where you can get on the loop and walk around and see different features. You can borrow these from the box that you'll see. You'll see boxes around the area where you can pick up these trail guides. You can borrow one, use it while you're walking around. Just be sure to place it back in the box. At this point in time, this video is being recorded in August of 2020. I believe the price of a trail guide is $1 and you can take one of the guides out of one of these uh, borrow boxes and place a dollar in a slot there and you can keep the trail guide. We'll be using this trail guide to help us find our way around the Old Faithful Loop. Starting with where to park. I'd like you to park right behind the visitor center which I've marked here on the trail guide and meet me in front of the visitor center, which I've marked with a blue arrow. From there, we'll take a short walk down around Old Faithful and to a bridge over the Firehole River, where we will then take a short walk up to a feature called Observation Point. And from Observation Point, we'll be able to get great photos showing the area around Old Faithful and if we plan our walk so that it coincides with an estimated eruption time of Old Faithful, then we might get a spectacular shot like this one, which I was lucky enough to get in the fall of 2018. After Observation Point, we'll walk back down the hill and we'll meet up for the walk around the 
Old Faithful Loop. And I think I'll step back at this point so that you can just enjoy the photo tour around the Old Faithful Loop. We'll start with an area called Geyser Hill. And then from there, I'll show you additional segments on the map, followed by more photos, and then the next segment on the map, and more photos until we've completed the entire Old Faithful Loop. Once we've completed that, I'll close out with a short safety advisory, how to prepare for your trip around the Old Faithful Loop so that you know what the hazards are. If you've got children with you, you'll know what protections you need to afford to the kids. And then I'll close out the video. I enjoyed bringing you that photo tour around the Old Faithful Loop in Yellowstone National Park. I'd like to close out with a brief overview of safety around Yellowstone in general, and certainly the Old Faithful Loop is no exception. Yellowstone is a wild place. It's not a zoo. It's not an amusement park. Be safe. Observe the signage and just observe the basic rules. When you're in an area that has a trail or a boardwalk or a marked area beyond which you shouldn't go, pay attention to those signs. On boardwalks, especially in hot springs areas like the Old Faithful Loop, keep your children at your side. No pets are allowed. No bicycles are allowed on boardwalks. If you're on a paved trail, most of those do allow uh, bicycle transportation. Carry water with you. Certainly take your binoculars along. Pay attention to weather conditions. You don't want to get an hour or two hours away from your hotel or lodge where you're staying and let the weather go down on you. The weather can change regularly. In the Old Faithful Visitor Center, there is a ranger station, and they will have approximate eruption times for each of the thermal features, as well as weather predictions for the day and the next couple of days. 
Most of all, enjoy your time in Yellowstone National Park. It's just one of the most fabulous places I've ever seen in my life. And I hope this video encourages you to get back to Yellowstone or see it for the first time. Thank you for watching and get outside. Oh, there is one more thing. I'd like to ask a favor if you wouldn't mind helping me promote my statistics with Google Analytics. You can do this in any of three ways, and I'd appreciate it if you'd do all three. First, click the subscribe button. It's free to subscribe, and you'll get notifications if you click the bell. Second, you can help my statistics if you'll watch the videos all the way to the end. And third, please recommend my videos to your friends and promote them on your social media pages. That's it. It's all free, and it will certainly help me in my journey. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.